In this video, we'll talk about the complete value investing roadmap so you'll know exactly your next steps and what you'll need to do to become a successful value investor. As you've already learned, by implementing the value investing strategy, you'll need to follow these three simple easy steps. First, we'll look for companies with a strong financial and operating performance. What we want to do as a value investor is to make sure that the company we're investing in has enough capacity for maintaining its operations profitably, as well as having an ability or strong economic moat to compete with its rivals in the same industry. You can evaluate if a business is financially strong or not by looking at some financial ratios and performing a financial statement analysis. You'll need to look into your company's balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement to find out what's behind the numbers. And when you found a solid company, the next step is important. You'll need to make sure that it's undervalued. You can easily determine if a stock is undervalued or overvalued by performing a stock valuation based on some method like the discounted free cash flow model. After estimating a company's intrinsic value, you simply compare its intrinsic value with the current market price. If the intrinsic value is greater than the current market price, the stock is considered undervalued. And on the other hand, when the intrinsic value is lower than the market price, the stock is overvalued. It's simple as that. And always make sure you'll apply a margin of safety to make sure that you'll actually buy an undervalued stock. However, knowing a company's intrinsic value is not enough. That's because you'll need to find the best opportunity to buy it. A great company can easily end up being your worst investment when you buy it at the wrong time. And that's why technical analysis is essential in your value investing system. By utilizing technical analysis, you'll know exactly when to buy your stock to maximize your profit while reducing your risk. And the final step is sell your stock when it becomes overvalued. Again, you can determine the best time to sell for maximum profit by using both stock valuation methods and technical analysis. So that's the three simple steps you'll need to follow. Now, let's talk about the roadmap for mastering the value investing technique. I've been a value investor for seven years now, and here's what I've learned to become a master. To become a profitable value investor, first and foremost, you'll need to learn all the best value investing strategies to find solid and financially strong companies to invest in. That is to say, you'll need a system. You'll need a set of investment criteria for evaluating and picking undervalued stocks. By having a system, you can make sure that all the companies you choose are rock-solid companies, and you can easily automate your stock analysis and valuation process. You can either build your own system or simply follow our copy and paste value investing system. After knowing all the strategies that actually work, you'll need to enhance your expertise so you can understand better all the businesses that you're investing in. You'll need to learn more about financial ratios and how to read and analyze a company's financial statements. If you were an accounting or finance student when you were in college, you might have gotten familiar with these topics. But if you're not a finance person, Learning these topics may be a little bit harder for you, but they are essential if you want to be successful as a value investor, so learn it well. Next, you'll also need to learn more about stock valuation. At least you should master how to use the discounted free cash flow model so you can project future cash flows of a company and estimate its intrinsic value. And when you're done with the intrinsic value, things will become much easier. Your next step is to use technical analysis to determine the best time to buy and sell your stocks. By using technical analysis, you simply look at a stock's chart and determine current market trends and predict the future movements of your stock. You'll need to look at some technical indicators and oscillators like the moving averages, the RSI, the Bollinger Bands, volume, the MACD, etc. And you can also look at chart patterns and candlestick patterns so you can predict if your stock's price will go up or down in the future. And the final thing, you'll need to develop a strong winning mindset and learn about trading psychology. You'll also need to know what affects the price of your stock, how to trade at minimal risks, how to reduce risks on your investments by placing a stop loss, etc. So, that's everything it takes to become a profitable value investor. You know, value investing is a big subject and it does require some kind of expertise, a lot of work, and patience. But you know, value investing will eventually pay off, 
I promise you that. Imagine you can grow your investments by at least 15 to 25% a year by just following a simple system that you can create on your own. That's much easier than putting your money somewhere else, like in the bank or your 401k and IRA that generally pay you nothing in return or a small fraction of the return you could have made. So, welcome to the value investing world. I believe you can do whatever it takes to become a better investor and you can change your financial future. Okay, first of all, I want to talk about saving and investing. There's a number of financial mistakes that people make in their lives, and one of the most serious mistakes is that they don't understand saving and investing. Saving won't make you richer. Investing will. Now, let's take a look at this situation. For example, you're making $2,000 a month. You start working at age 25, and you decide to retire at age 65 so your working period is about 40 years. Assume that you won't have to spend your salary, your income, on anything, and this literally means you can save 100% of your income. So with the average income of $2,000 a month, if you keep working hard in 40 years and save all your money, you'll be able to make a maximum of $960,000. You would almost be a millionaire. But the fact is that saving 100% of your income is simply impossible. That's because you'll have to spend a lot on housing, food, apparel, transportation, your entertainment, your family's vacation, your children's education, healthcare services, social security, your insurance, charities, and a lot more. So with an average income of $2,000 a month, you will never be a millionaire. Okay, now. Let's take a look at another situation so you can see exactly how investing can help you get wealthy without any extra effort. Assume that your income is still $2,000 a month, but in this case, you decide to save a small percentage of your income, for example, $300 a month, to invest. Assume that you start investing at age 25 and continue to invest $300 a month until you retire at age 65. With an only 10% annual return from the stock market, you'll be able to turn your $300 investments into $1.6 million in 40 years. Let's compare that with the previous case where you have to work really hard and try to save all of your money in 40 years. As you can see, for the same number of years, and with small investments of only $300 a month, you can easily double your net worth, build a satisfying retirement, and retire wealthy with a millionaire status. So, how can we turn small investments of $300 a month into $1.6 million? We can actually do so thanks to the amazing power of compound interest. Compounding is the wonderful way in which you can earn money not only on the original amount of an investment, but on all of the money that original amount earns along the way. Money makes money and compounding exponentially increases the amount of money your investment earns. How compound interest works is simple. Let's say you have an investment that gives you a return of 20% in interest every year. For example, you invest $100 in the stock market. So in the first year, your investment will grow from $100 to $120. This means you've made $20 in profit. Instead of taking out the $20 profit, you decide to keep investing it. So your investment is now worth $120. In the second year, your investment will continue to grow by 20%, this time from $120 to $144. So you'll make a $24 profit in the second year of investing. The key to compounding lies in the fact that returns on an investment are reinvested as they're earned. This is what differentiates the compound return from the simple return. If you keep reinvesting your money, you'll make more and more profits every year. If you start saving and investing $300 a month today and grow your investments by an affordable return of 10% from the stock market, you can easily build a net worth of $1 million or more. If you start saving and investing $1,000 a month today, and if you do it the right way, 
I guarantee you, sooner or later, you'll be a millionaire. And if you're making a lot of money, maybe you're running a business or you're having a good job, just try to invest as much as you can. If you save and invest $5,000 a month with the same rate of return of only 10%, you can turn your investments into $17 million in 35 years. In fact, the more money you save to invest, the faster you'll achieve your financial goals. If you think that 35 years is too long, just think about it for a second. Everything takes time, and no matter what you're doing, you cannot achieve great results overnight. Period. Looking at Warren Buffett, the world's most successful investor, he once said, I made my first investment at age 11. I was wasting my life up until then. Warren Buffett's been investing his money for over 75 years. It took him 75 years to become the richest investor in the world. You know, it's totally worth it. As you can see, making money takes time, investing takes time, and creating real wealth takes time. So forget about how long you'll invest your money for. Just put in the work and start investing as early as possible. Now you see the importance of investing in creating wealth. You just need to invest a small percentage of your income, and you can build a more satisfying retirement, create a better financial life, and have an abundance to care for your family and accomplish your dreams. Interesting, right? So how can we achieve a risk-free 10% annual return from the stock market? To be able to do so, you must first see the bigger picture of the stock market. As promised, I'm going to share with you my profitable investing experience that's helped me consistently profit from the stock market. I learned this secret the hard way by experiencing a lot of mistakes and failures. And now I'm sharing it with you because I don't want you to make the same mistakes as I did. And more importantly, I want you to succeed. Okay, now let's take a look at how the stock market's performed in the last 30 years. This is the 30-year history of the U.S. stock market. As you can see on the screen, over the last 30 years, from 1986 to 2016, the stock market's value has increased by over 1,000%. For example, if you had invested in the Dow Jones 30 years ago, your investment would grow by more than 1,300%. This is just a simple estimation. In fact, your annual return would have been a lot higher than 1,300%. That's because you would have earned a lot more thanks to the compound interest, and you'd also receive dividends from your investment. As you can see on the chart, the stock market's value went up and down over time. There were some years that the stock market's value went up, and there were some years that the market's value went down. But if you notice, over the long term, the stock market would always keep increasing in value. The profitable investing experience is that the stock market is very volatile in a short term, but in the long term, it will always keep going up in value. Still don't believe? Okay, now let's see the five-year performance of the S&P 500 index. As you can see on the screen, the stock market was very volatile. Its value went up and down over time. And that simply means if you invest in the short term, you'll likely take more risks. When I first started, I only looked for short-term investments because I was not patient. I was clueless about what was going to happen. And that's why I failed and lost all of my hard-earned money. In fact, we have no idea about what's going on with the market. But if you notice over the long term, the stock market will always keep increasing in value. If you'd invested in the S&P 500 just five years ago, you would have been able to grow your money by nearly 90%. That would have been an easy 17.8% return every year just to buy and hold your investment. Still not a believer? Now let's take a look at some random companies. For example, Amazon. As you can see on the screen, this company's stock is very volatile. The stock price went up and down over time, and the price fluctuation range is somewhere between $50 and $200 a share. That is to say, if you buy and sell this stock without a real strategy, chances are you'll potentially lose hundreds or thousands of dollars in just a few days or weeks. 
Actually, we don't know what will happen next with the stock market. But if you notice, over the long term, this stock will likely keep going up in value. If you'd invested in Amazon five years ago, invest for the long term, you would have grown your investment by more than 200%. You could have doubled your money in just five years and made $500 a share in profit. You see, by knowing a simple truth, you can make almost all of your investments become profitable. That's why people who know how to invest are always richer and wealthier than people who don't know how to invest. Now let's take a look at another example, Visa. This company's stock price also went up and down over time, but over the long term, it would always keep increasing in value. If you had invested in Visa five years ago, you could have easily made over 50% return every year from your investment. Okay, another example, Google. Similar to Amazon, this company's stock is also very volatile. The price fluctuation range is somewhere between $50 and $200 a share. It would be really risky if you invest in this stock for a short term. You may lose a lot of money when the price fluctuates. But if you invest for the long term, you can easily eliminate the risk and make your investment profitable. Five years ago, you could buy Google stock at about $300 a share. And now its value has grown to more than $800 a share. And this simply means, if you'd invested in Google five years ago, you would have made over $500 a share easily and effortlessly. Okay, the next example, the Home Depot. Despite the fact that this company's stock price went up and down every day, its value would always keep increasing over the long term. If you'd invested in this stock five years ago, you could have easily made over 53% return every year from your investment. The same for Facebook. Even though its stock price fluctuated wildly over time, this company would keep increasing in value over the long term. If you'd invested in Facebook, you could have tripled your money in just five years. Okay, another example, Nike. As you can see on the chart, this company's value has grown by 146% in the last five years. If you'd bought and held Nike five years ago, you would have made a more than 29% annualized return from your investment. Still not a believer yet? Now let's take a look at another example, Papa John's International. This is a value stock that I've recently purchased. As you can see on the screen, even though Papa John's is a great company, its stock is very volatile. The stock price went up and down over time, but if you notice, over the long term, the stock would always keep going up in value. If you'd invested in this company five years ago, you could have grown your investment by over 400%. And this simply means you could have multiplied your money by four in just five years, without trying too hard to beat the market. Okay, one more example, TXRH, or Texas Roadhouse. This is a good company that I've recently purchased, and many of my students also bought this stock and made some good profits. As you can see on the chart, even though the stock price went up and down over time, the stock's value would always keep increasing over the long term. If you'd invested in TXRH five years ago, you would have been able to make over 46% return a year on your investment. And this simply means that you could have doubled your money in just five years without taking high risks or trying too hard. So what can we learn from this experience? Investing in the short term simply means you'll likely take higher risks. If you wanna really make money with your short term investments, you'll have to master a lot of technical trading skills. And you know, it's not easy at all. So if you have no experience in using technical analysis, you should avoid making short-term investments. Our profitable investing experience is that the stock market will always keep going up in value over the long term. So if you're looking for the easiest and most profitable way to make your money work for you, you may want to look for long-term investments. For example, you can invest in value stocks, ETFs, or some kinds of income stocks. If you have no idea about these types of investments, don't worry, because I've got you covered in the next video. The final key point to take away is that both stock markets and individual stocks share the same characteristics. 
So no matter if you invest in the whole stock market index or invest in a particular company, you can apply the same strategy to grow your money. Okay, one more useful tip. If you're new to investing, you can apply the 90-10 rule to get started. How this rule works is simple. You can invest 90% of your money in long-term investments to make sure that your money will be safe and invest the remaining 10% in short-term investments to test the water. This way, it's much safer because if you fail, you'll only lose a small amount of money. You'll have nothing to worry about but everything to gain. By applying the same strategy that I've shared, you can easily turn your small investments of just $300 a month into a million dollars in 35 years. It's a lot of money for no extra effort. Just save some money and invest it. With an average return of 10%, you can easily turn your $300 investments into a million dollars in 35 years. However, if you can double your return, say you can make a return of 20% per year for the same number of years and for the same amount of money invested, you can build a net worth of over $11 million. And that also means that you can easily multiply your net worth by 10 just by doubling your compound return to an affordable 20% a year. Investing is exciting, right? Once you have a real strategy, you can consistently multiply your money. And that's why knowing how to invest can change your life forever. It is very easy to make a 10% return a year. All you need is patience. You just need to have enough patience to wait for your money to grow. However, if you want to double your return to 20%, besides being patient, you'll need real education and a lot of hard work. When it comes to investing, honestly, you can't succeed overnight, and there will be no shortcut. To be successful as an investor, you must first invest in your education. You'll need to learn real strategies, put those strategies into practice, and start letting your money work hard for you. So now you know exactly what you need to do to grow your money and create a better financial life. Here's what we're going to cover in the next video. Make sure you keep an eye on your inbox because we'll have a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. In the next video, I'll teach you exactly how you can instantly build four streams of passive income. You'll learn how to build your own investment portfolio. I'll also teach you exactly how to use money to make money and give you my best investing tips and a lot more. Glad you enjoy it here and I'll see you in the next video. You know, an average millionaire has around seven sources of income. In order to achieve wealth, having multiple streams of income is important. But building multiple income streams is not an easy job. That's because most of your time is spent on maintaining your first stream of income. That's your job or your business. And it's even harder when you have to work long hours and get tired when you get home. It's not an excuse, but we're all human beings. We have our own limits and incapacities. And we cannot ignore the fact that our time is limited as well. That's why I decided to make this video to show you the best and easiest way to grow your wealth safely and effortlessly. So, how can you easily create four streams of passive income? The answer to this question is simple. You just need to invest your money in four different types of paper assets. And if you do everything right, those investments will be consistently putting the money back into your pocket. You can increase your income without any extra effort, and you can easily make a lot of money while you sleep. Interesting, right? So, what are those paper assets? Now, I'll dive into four different types of paper assets that I've been using to multiply my money and create multiple streams of passive income. They are ETFs, or exchange-traded funds, value stocks, dividend-paying stocks, and REITs, or real estate investment trusts. In order to create four distinct sources of income, you just need to put your money into these types of investments and then let them do all the work for you. Now, let me dive into each type of investment in turn 
so you can see exactly how you can use money to make more money. Okay, first of all, I'll talk about ETFs. So, what exactly is an ETF? ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. An ETF is simply an investment portfolio that contains various types of investments, such as stocks, bonds, or some kinds of funds. Normally, ETFs are designed to track the overall performance of a particular stock market or sector, a bond market, or even a real estate market. So when you buy an ETF, this simply means that you're investing in a diversified portfolio that includes a number of different investments. For example, you invest in DIA, which is often known as Diamond ETF. It's an ETF that's designed to track the overall performance of the Dow Jones Index. For those who don't know about the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a stock market index that consists of the 30 largest businesses in the United States. So when you buy this ETF, this simply means that you're investing in those 30 largest businesses. And the cool part is, your money will be diversified and invested into many different market sectors, such as financials, healthcare, technology, energy, consumer services, etc. And that's the reason why investing in ETFs is the best way for you to build your long-term wealth. You don't need to buy a lot of companies. By investing in a single ETF, you're investing in different businesses in different market sectors. Basically, ETFs are the same as mutual funds, or some kinds of index funds, but their expense ratios are much lower. For example, if you buy a mutual fund, you'll have to pay 1-5% to of your return in management fees every year, while if you hold an ETF, you'll only have to pay from 0.01% to less than 1% in management fees. That is to say, investing in an ETF is 10 to 100 times cheaper than investing in a mutual fund. If you invest in ETFs, you can easily make a 10 to 15% return every year. It still requires some strategy though. The fact is that not every ETF is worth investing in. Some ETFs come up with bad performance, high management fees, and a high level of risks. So you'll need some strategies or some kind of knowledge to pick the right investment for yourself. Okay, one more useful tip to take away before we dive into the next type of investment. Always make sure that you stay away from mutual funds and wealth management services. That's because buying an ETF is much cheaper and you can easily manage your portfolio by yourself. There's no need to waste your money on any wealth management services. You are an investor, so do it yourself and take full control of your money. Okay, the second type of investment, value stock. I bet you've heard a lot about value investing. So what exactly is value investing? Value investing simply means you buy something that's worth $2 for only $1. Well, not exactly, but you get my point here. Value investing means you buy a company when it's cheap or undervalued and then sell it when it becomes more expensive or overvalued. So, how do you know if a stock is undervalued or overvalued? To determine whether a stock is cheap or expensive, you'll need to estimate its intrinsic value. A company is undervalued when its intrinsic value is greater than its current market value. Intrinsic value is simply a real value or true value of a business and market value is simply the price at which the stock is currently selling. So to put it simply, if the true value of something is greater than the price at which it's selling, this means it's cheap, undervalued, or underpriced. So when you buy a stock that's undervalued, there will be a high chance that its value will increase over the long term, and you'll make a profit. That's all value investing is about. Buy something that's now cheap, and sell it later for a profit. Similarly, a company is considered overvalued when its intrinsic value is lower than its current market price. The fact is that not every stock is worth investing in even if they're blue chip companies. If you frequently perform intrinsic value calculation, you'll find that 90% of companies you're evaluating are overvalued. There will be a very low chance that you'll make a profit if you buy these stocks. And of course, there will be a very high chance that you'll lose your money if you pick the wrong investment. Now, 
I'm not scaring you, but just like any other businesses, investing involves some kind of risks. But some of these risks are controllable and can be easily avoided if you equip yourself with enough knowledge. If you master the art of value investing, you can easily make a 15 to 25% plus return every year. Actually, when you do everything right, you can easily make 20% or more in just a few months, just like I and many of my students did. There are thousands of opportunities to make money in the stock market. There are thousands of stocks out there. So the only thing you need is a real strategy to pick the best ones to invest in. Okay, now I'll talk about the third source of income, dividend-paying stocks. Investing in dividend stocks is the easiest way for you to profit from the stock market. Dividend stocks are simply companies that pay good dividends to their shareholders and investors like yourself. A stock dividend is an amount paid out by a company, usually in the form of cash, to investors who hold shares of their stock. So investing in this type of investment is very easy but profitable because you just need to find a good company, put your money into it, and wait for it to put the money back into your pocket. Most companies pay dividends quarterly, so you can collect the money four times a year. Just invest in a stock that pays good dividends. Forget it, and three months later, collect the money without really putting in any effort. That's exactly what dividend investing is about. The most interesting thing about dividend stocks is that they're a hybrid investment. This means you invest once, but you can profit twice. Sounds interesting, right? Dividend stocks allow you to share in company profits while also retaining ownership of your investment. When you invest in a dividend stock, you can earn a 5% to 12% plus return every year, paid out by the company in the form of cash dividends. And because you own all the shares you bought, when those shares increase in value, you'll make more profits. Normally, a good dividend stock will potentially grow at 5% or more every year. So if you put your money into this type of investment, you'll potentially earn a 10% or more return on your investment every year without any effort. However, similar to ETFs and value stocks, not every dividend stock is worth investing in. Some lousy businesses tend to attract outside investors by offering a high dividend yield. So you'll need to evaluate them carefully to find out if they're actually a solid company. Okay, the last type of investment that we're going to talk about is REIT. REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. A REIT is a company that owns multiple rental properties, such as office and apartment buildings, hospitals, shopping malls, hotels, resorts, and so on. Similar to ETFs, a REIT is more like an investment portfolio that includes many income-producing real estate. So when you buy a REIT, this simply means that you're buying a small part of the portfolio. And the cool part is, you don't need to have millions of dollars to become a landlord. By buying a single REIT, you'll become a part owner of many rental properties. REITs make a profit from renting out their properties and they're legally required to pay out as much as 90% of their income to unit holders or investors like yourself every year. So investing in REITs will bring you a stable stream of passive income. And the more interesting thing is that your money is now diversified into the real estate market. Just like investing in dividend stocks, investing in REITs is very simple. You just need to find a good REIT company, put your money into it, and wait for it to put the money back into your pocket. Investing in REITs will potentially bring you a stable return of 6 to 12% every year. So, how can you start investing your money now? The first thing you'll need to do is to make an investment budget. You should save 10 to 30% of your current income to invest. You don't need to have a lot of money to start investing. You may start with small investments of just a few hundred bucks every month and frequently add more money into your portfolio. The more money you save to invest, the more wealth you can achieve. In order to build your investment portfolio, you may allocate your money as follows. Put 40% of your money into ETFs, invest 25% in value stocks, and the remaining 25% in some income-producing assets like dividend stocks and REITs. 
Investing in ETFs is very important because they'll bring you a stable long-term profit. Make sure that you'll invest at least 40% of your money in this type of investment. Investing in value stocks will help you grow your portfolio faster as well as maximize your profit. If you can master the techniques of value investing, you can easily double or even triple your money in just a few months. However, investing in value stocks is much riskier than investing in other types of investments. So if you're just starting out, you should not invest more than 25% of your money in this type of investment. Investing in income stocks like dividend stocks and REITs will bring you a good stream of passive income. This is the easiest way to profit from the stock market. You just need to find some good companies, put your money into them, and collect dividends. You can easily make a few thousand dollars extra every year. You can use these earnings to supplement your own lifestyle, schedule a vacation for your family, save to buy some luxury stuff, do charity, or do whatever you want. Investing in ETFs will bring you a stable long-term profit. Investing in value stocks will help you grow your money faster. Investing in dividend stocks and REITs will help you create a good stream of passive income. Now, you have a robust investment portfolio. In order to get wealthy, you must find ways to increase your income. It's all about income, guys. You must create multiple streams of income. In this video, you've learned four different investment vehicles that you can use to grow your money. Investing in ETFs will bring you a stable long-term profit. Investing in value stocks will help you grow your money faster. However, they often come up with a higher risk and require a lot of expertise. And if you want to make easy money, investing in dividend stocks and REITs may be the best option for you. Okay, that's enough for today's lesson. Now you know exactly how to use money to make more money. You see, investing is easy, right? It's not rocket science you can easily create an extra stream of income that you can use to improve your lifestyle or support your family. Make sure you keep an eye on your inbox because things are getting more exciting. In the next video, I'll share with you my simple yet powerful technical analysis technique that you can start using today to make over 20.31% return in just a few months. I'll teach you step-by-step step how to set up the technical indicator and how to use it effectively to determine if a stock's price will go up or down in the near future. I'll also give you my best investment tips, such as how to choose the right stockbroker for yourself, how much money should you have to start investing, and a lot more. So make sure you don't miss the next video. Glad you enjoyed here, and I'll see you in the next video. First of all, I want to talk about how to choose the right stockbroker. Before investing in the stock market, you'll have to sign up for a trading account from a stockbroker so you can use that account to buy and sell shares and manage your portfolio. But the thing is, there are a lot of stockbrokers out there, and maybe you have no idea of which one is the best for you and your trading needs. You see, some stockbrokers offer very good service while some are lousy and they come up with many hidden fees. So I think the most valuable information for you is how you can find a good stockbroker who can help you make your investments. Okay, there are three important criteria that I always use to determine if a stockbroker is good for me and my trading needs. The first thing, they must be reliable. Remember, when you use a stockbroker, you'll have to deposit your money into their brokerage account. And this simply means that they'll keep your money and help you make investments on your behalf. So, when you give someone your money, they must be reliable and trustworthy. If you can't trust them, how dare you let them keep your money? When it comes to trading, having peace of mind is very important. That's because trading is very stressful, especially when you're a beginner. How can you make a good trade when you keep worrying about whether your money is safe? So first of all, you must start with a reliable stockbroker. Do some research and list all stockbrokers in your country. Find out the most popular and reliable ones and eliminate all brokers that have many bad reviews and testimonials. The next thing that you should take into consideration is a trading platform. 
In order to trade effectively, you'll need a professional trading software that can help you perform technical analysis to predict the future movement of your stock. Normally, your stockbroker will provide you access to their trading platform for free. Some of them may charge a monthly subscription fee to their trading software and higher level financial data. I prefer using the Thinkorswim trading platform from TD Ameritrade. It's an advanced trading tool and the cool part is, it's completely free. You can easily sign up for a trading account from TD Ameritrade. You don't need to deposit any funds to open a trading account with them. After you have your trading account, you can use their professional trading software, Thinkorswim, for free. Besides TD Ameritrade, there are some stockbrokers that also provide advanced trading tools, such as Interactive Brokers and E-Trade. However, these brokers often require you to make an initial deposit to open a trading account with them. And the final thing you should care about is pricing. In my opinion, Pricing is less important than the first two criteria, which are the reliability of a stockbroker and their trading platform. That's because as an investor, you need to make sure your money will be kept securely by a trusted broker. And you'll also need a professional unbiased trading software to trade effectively. Normally, you'll be charged about 10 bucks per trade. You see, the trading fee is not too expensive. Actually, if you can make money from the stock market, you don't need to worry too much about the trading fee. So make sure you'll always look for a reliable broker with a professional trading platform first, and then look at their trading fee later. Besides TD Ameritrade, my favorite stockbroker is Interactive Brokers. They're the cheapest but most reliable broker. You'll be charged just $1 for every 100 shares you buy. This broker offers a very good trading fee. However, to open a trading account with them, you'll be required to make an initial deposit of at least $10,000. Okay, my number one trading tip for you is that you can have two trading accounts. If you're investing in the U.S. stock market, you can open a trading account from TD Ameritrade and Interactive Brokers. The cool thing about TD Ameritrade is that you don't need to make any initial deposit to open a trading account with them. Once you have your trading account, you can use their trading platform Thinkorswim for free. You can use your TD Ameritrade account for analyzing stock charts and use your Interactive Brokers account for buying and selling stocks. As I've mentioned earlier, using Interactive Brokers is very cost effective because you'll be charged just one buck for every 100 shares you buy. In case you use other stock brokers, you'll be charged about 10 bucks or more. So by having two trading accounts from TD Ameritrade and Interactive Brokers, you can trade with a very low trading fee, and you have free access to the Thinkorswim trading software. Okay, the second tip. You should always stay away from cheap and unreliable brokers. Many first-time investors look for cheap brokers because these brokers offer a low trading fee but they don't understand that low cost simply means low quality services. You'll get what you pay for. You see, cheap brokers are consistently lowering their fees in order to attract more customers and gain market share. Some even offer free trades. They offer you a low trading fee, but they'll charge you for accessing high level market data and their trading software. And they often have a low quality customer service there will be a lot of hidden fees and you'll get what you pay for. So make sure you always stay away from cheap and unreliable stockbrokers. And the next question that I think many of you have right now is, how much money should I have to start investing? In fact, you don't need to have a lot of money to start investing. You can start with $10,000 and then you can add $300 or $500 to your portfolio every month. It's okay to start investing if you don't have $10,000. Maybe you have $3,000 or $5,000 right now. However, you should take the trading fee into consideration. That's because trading and commission fees charged by your stockbroker will potentially outweigh your profits if you trade with a small account. I strongly recommend that you only invest when you have no debt and you have some money that you can afford to lose. And always make sure that you'll invest in your education first. 
You cannot succeed if you don't know exactly what you're doing. If you don't have $10,000 to invest now, don't worry. Just save up more cash and start investing later. After you open a trading account, you can frequently add more cash to your portfolio so you can take advantage of the compound interest to grow your money. And the final tip is that you should avoid making a trade on mobile. That's because mobile trading sucks. I agree that some mobile trading apps are convenient on the go, but the downside is that you can't analyze a stock's chart accurately. You can't use some technical indicators properly, and that will potentially lead to a bad investment decision. Sometimes you'll face some connection issues, so make sure that you won't make a trade when you're using mobile. You should only use mobile trading apps for monitoring your stock's performance and reading market news. So, to wrap everything up before we dive into the next section, what do you need to start investing? The first thing you'll need is education. You must first invest in your education. You'll need $10,000 to start investing, and then you can add three to $500 each month to build up your portfolio. Next, you'll need a trading account. You can open two trading accounts, one from TD Ameritrade, and one from Interactive Brokers, so you can take advantage of the low trading fee from Interactive Brokers and have free access to the professional trading software from TD Ameritrade. And finally, you'll need a laptop with an internet connection to start buying and selling stocks. And make sure you avoid making a trade when you're on your mobile. Only use mobile apps for monitoring your stock's performance and reading market news. Okay, now. I'm going to share with you my favorite trading strategy that you can use to easily determine stock market trends. I'll teach you how to buy high and sell higher. How this strategy works is simple. We'll buy a stock when it's in an uptrend and we'll consider selling it at the end of the uptrend. So how can we determine the market trends? In order to determine market trends, you can use the simple moving average crossover strategy. A moving average is a trend-following indicator, and it's created based on past prices. How the moving average crossover strategy works is simple. We'll use a pair of simple moving averages. We'll wait until these moving averages cross over each other so we can determine the incoming market trend. In fact, you don't need to draw these moving averages by yourself. Almost all trading platforms will help you do so. You just need to know what they are and how to apply them in your analysis. There are many different ways to use the moving averages. I personally prefer using the 180-day and the 60-day simple moving averages, simply because they seem to be more accurate than other moving averages. And the most important thing is, these moving averages work for me. Okay, here's an uptrend signal. When the 60-day moving average crosses above the 180-day moving average and both lines slope upward, this means that your stock is in an uptrend. So if you follow the trend to buy the stock, there's a high chance that the stock price will keep going up and you can make a profit. On the other hand, when the 60-day moving average crosses below the 180-day moving average and both lines slope downward, this means that the prior uptrend has stopped and a downtrend will begin. In this case, you can sell your stock to get out of the market and consider buying it back when the trend reverses. Okay, now you know exactly how our strategy works. So how can you apply it in your analysis? First of all, you'll need to set up the indicators. I'm using the Thinkorswim trading platform from TD Ameritrade. As I mentioned earlier, it's a professional trading tool that you can use to analyze stock charts. And the cool part is, this software is free. It's very easy to set up the simple moving averages. You'll need to draw two lines, SMA, or Simple Moving Average 180, and SMA 60. Up on the right hand, click on Studies, and then select Edit Studies. There are a few tabs right here. Under Studies tab, type in Simple Moving Average. You'll see the Simple Moving Average indicator here. Since we need to draw two lines, the SMA 60 and the SMA 180, we'll add two simple moving averages to the stock chart. 
Select Simple Moving Average and then click Add Selected twice. Because the default moving average time period is set at 9, you'll need to change it to 60 and 180. Double click on each moving average and change the time period to 60 and 180 respectively. I personally prefer changing the SMA60's color to blue and the SMA180's color to yellow. You can use different colors if you like. After changing the time periods, simply click Apply and OK. When you do, you'll see the screen here. The software automatically helped us draw the two moving averages. Now, we just need to apply our strategy to determine the incoming market trend. OK, now let's take a look at an example so you can understand clearly how the simple moving average crossover strategy works. As you can see from the chart, the blue line is the 60 day simple moving average, and the yellow line is the 181. Now, let's see what the moving averages can tell you about the market trends. When you analyze your stock's chart and you find that the SMA60 is above the SMA180 and both lines are sloping up, there's a high chance that the stock is in an uptrend. So, in cases like this, you can follow the trend to get in the market. However, when the SMA60 is going to cross below the SMA180, this may necessitate the selling of your stock. In this case, you'll need to pay close attention to the price movement of your stock. If the blue line crosses below the yellow line and both lines are sloping down, this signals that there may be an incoming downtrend. As you can see on the screen, when the SMA60 crossed below the SMA180 at point A, the share price of Apple began dropping. And when the blue line crossed above the yellow line at point B, and both lines sloped upward, the trend reversed and the share price of Apple started going back up. The blue line crossed below the yellow line once again at point C, and you can see that both lines are sloping down. This signals that there will be an incoming downtrend, so it may not be a good idea if you're looking to buy shares of Apple at this time. Actually, we don't know what will happen with the stock tomorrow. However, the moving averages show that there will be a high chance that the share price will continue to drop until the SMA60 crosses above the SMA180. Okay, now let's take a look at another example, Starbucks Corporation. Firstly, let's take a look at point A. As you can see, the SMA60 crossed above the SMA180 and both lines sloped upward. This was an uptrend signal. The stock price kept going up until the SMA60 crossed below the SMA180 at point B. However, as you may notice, the two lines weren't sloping down. The blue line sloped downward, but the yellow line didn't. It was sloping up. So this tells us that there was just a short-term fluctuation, and the stock was still in an uptrend. Even though the stock price had actually dropped, it was just short-term. In cases like this, you can predict that the downtrend is just temporary and the price will potentially go up again soon. As you can see from the chart, after the short-term drop, the stock price recovered and went back up quickly. Our strategy requires both lines to slope upward or downward so we can confirm the incoming trend. So if one of the two lines doesn't slope correctly, we will not consider it a valid trend signal. When the blue line crossed below the yellow line at point C and both lines were sloping down, we might consider this a valid downtrend signal. As you can see, the stock price continued to drop until the SMA 60 crossed above the SMA 180 once again at point D. Both lines started sloping upward, so we could easily predict that there would be an incoming uptrend. Okay. Now let's take a look at another example, Papa John's International. As you can see on the screen, the SMA60 was above the SMA180. This means that the stock was in an uptrend. The blue line crossed below the yellow line at point A, but both lines weren't sloping down. This tells us that this was just a short-term fluctuation. The blue line crossed above the yellow line at point B, and both lines were sloping up. 
so you could easily predict that this stock's price would potentially go up. Looking at point C, the SMA60 crossed below the SMA180 again, and both lines were sloping down. In this case, you could easily predict that there would be an incoming downtrend. The SMA60 crossed above the SMA180 again at point D, and both lines were sloping up. So, this is an uptrend signal, and you could easily know that the stock price would potentially go back up soon. Okay, another example, Spider S&P 500 ETF. This is an ETF that's designed to track the overall performance of the S&P 500 index. Now, let's take a look at point A. The SMA 60 crossed above the SMA 180, and both lines were sloping up, so this was an uptrend signal. The blue line crossed below the yellow line at point B, and both lines were sloping down. In this case, you could easily predict that there would be an incoming downtrend. As you can see on the screen, there was a significant drop in this ETF's price. This was caused by the stock market crash in 2008. When the market crashed, many investors lost their fortune. Our simple strategy could have saved them from the crash if they knew how to utilize it. The stock market went back up again when the SMA 60 crossed above the SMA 180 at point C. Both lines were sloping up, so this was a valid uptrend signal. Looking at point D, the blue line crossed below the yellow line at point D. However, the yellow wasn't sloping down. So you could easily know that this was just a short-term fluctuation. The stock price would go back up shortly when the blue line crossed above the yellow line at point E. As you can see, our strategy's been working very well. If you can utilize this strategy, you can easily predict incoming market trends. And this is the key to your success. But wait a second, don't just take my word for it. You can easily sign up for a free demo trading account from TD Ameritrade to test everything out. Sign up for a free demo trading account. You'll have 60 days for trying the Thinkorswim trading platform. The demo trading account will come up with a virtual cash balance of $200,000 and you can use this money to test everything that you've learned so far. Go and test all the strategies that I've taught you. I guarantee you, if you can apply everything I teach here, you can get wealthy and build a better financial life. Here's what's inside the Thinkorswim trading software. You can use this tool to practice buying and selling stocks. Try to make different types of orders. Buy different types of investments such as ETFs, stocks, or REITs. Once you become familiar with the stock market and gain enough knowledge and experience, you can open a real trading account and start multiplying your money. So now you know exactly how to start making your money work for you. And I want to tell you an interesting fact. This strategy has been working very well for me, my friends, and thousands of my students. This strategy also works for stocks, ETFs, REITs, or any of your investments. And also, I want to guarantee you, what you've learned so far will work for you too. And finally, I want to thank you for learning with my video lessons. And thank you for spending your time with me over the past few days. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Check out the offers in the description for more surprises. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to check out more exciting videos in our channel.